Hello everyone, welcome back to the Solutions Lab. I'm Chris Phillips, DNH's Technical Enablement Supervisor. And I'm excited to be here today because we have uh, Ka Ka Carl Palachak with us. I was going to botch that from the very beginning. Sorry, Carl. Um, and try from Zeixel. Carl is a renowned author. He's authored uh, several books on moving to a revenue-based business model. And he's got a, a short presentation for us today. We also have Tri from Zyxel, who's got some more information on their revenue-based, their cloud-based uh, platform as well. But to get started, we're going to throw things over to Carl, and Carl's going to do his presentation. If you have any questions throughout this presentation, there is a Q&A form on the bottom left-hand side. Please feel free to ask questions at any time. We will be doing a 30-minute Q&A session after Carl's presentation. Carl, take it away. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So let me advance this. Here we go. I love this quote from Patrick Schwartbegger on uh, success. Those who approach the future with excitement are playing offense and positioning themselves for uh, opportunity. Those who approach the future with fear are playing defense and worrying that new business models will displace them. So the recurring revenue model is magic. I mean, it's, it's hard to overstress how important recurring revenue is. And so if you're doing break fix, you're literally trading dollars for hours. We want to get you away from that as much as possible. So how do I show my slides? Is it screen share? No. Uh, Chris, if you could help. Are people seeing my slides? Chris, are people seeing the slides? Okay, well, I shall proceed. Um, <clears throat> so I, my name's Carl, and I've written 20 books, most of them on how to run as an IT company. Uh, I have blogs and podcasts and so forth, and I would appreciate it. Just find me on social media. If, if you can figure out how to spell Polichuk, you can find me somewhere, and I'm happy to connect. It's easier to so, spell than it is to say. <laughs> so uh, in terms of what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about kind of where we're going and what this model looks like and some of the tools you need to be successful. So uh, in terms of where we're going, a lot of people still ask the question that literally led me to write managed services in a month. The question is, is it too late to get into managed services? And I have to say, it seems odd to me that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's such a question that people still have to ask. If you are trading dollars for hours, just mathematically, there's a limit to how much money you can possibly make. You know, if you think about it, it doesn't matter what you charge per hour. Uh, you're likely, if you are a single person, able to uh, bill, if you're lucky, a thousand hours a year. So, you know, no matter what you charge, you have limited how much income you can make. Where with recurring revenue and managed services, um, you can multiply that almost magically. So, uh, to me, managed services is tech support that's man that's delivered under a service agreement, which means you sign a contract. Uh, it provides specific rates, and uh, it guarantees you a certain level of income. Now, that doesn't mean that it has to be flat fee. And it absolutely should never be all you can eat. Uh, if you if you look up my name and all you can eat or A Y C E, you'll see that all the time people are talking about the fact that I hate all you can eat. The the all you can eat model is eventually going to be a disaster for you. So don't ever use that term. Don't let other people use that term. There is no such thing as all you can eat. And so just avoid it, right? It's just a disaster. But 
I do think that you should flat fee things as much as possible. And uh, a perfect example is if you think about if you do something maintenance focused, right, that you every month go in and you provide monthly maintenance to a client, you verify that their systems are working the way they're supposed to and that all of the uh, maintenance is done, everything is, is got all the patches, <clears throat> patches, fixes and updates, right? That's the basis for building a good relationship. You basically do it the right way. You do it the way that you would want your systems to be supported. Then you can move that into a flat fee model and say, look, uh, it's whatever, X number of dollars per month. So let's say that's $1,000 a month. Now, the more efficient you are, the better. So when you add the right tools to it, you can get that maintenance done with less and less labor each month. And so you become more profitable over time. It also has the advantage that the client doesn't have these huge spikes as their costs for tech support go up and down. The, the client sees a good, solid, you know, even distribution of their money, and that makes it easier for them to budget um, and easier for them to kind of get addicted to that method of uh, service. So that's kind of where we're going. So in the model of break fix, the basic model that everybody starts out with because uh, and I, and you don't even call it that, right? You just start out your business and you say, okay, I'm going to do some work and then I'm going to send somebody a bill. And the problem is break fix guarantees downtime. By definition, you wait until something breaks and then you go fix it, right? So the, the way that you do that uh, just by default means that your clients have downtime. You don't make money unless your client's systems are broken. And, you know, that's just not a very good way to provide support if you have an alternative. And in the 21st century, we have many alternatives. So a lot of people say, well, I'm just a computer consultant, right? Well, you should think of yourself as a managed service provider. And what that means, managed services fundamentally means you focus on preventive maintenance. You put your arms around the client system and you take ownership of it. Many people who have told me that they're, that managed services doesn't work for them are, in fact, not delivering managed services. What they're doing is they're selling a flat fee contract. They're waiting until things break, and then they're going to fix them. So they're really doing break-fix work, but they're calling it managed services. A true managed service provider will put the emphasis on preventive maintenance. That means you have to have an RMM, you have to have good tools, you have to have processes to go in and make sure everything is working so that you have less and less downtime. You can still be just as visible to the client. It's one of these things everybody worries about. Well, if I stop showing up at the office, the clients will wonder where, what they're paying money for. I've never gotten that objection from a client. <laughs> in 25 years, I've never gotten that objection. I get it from consultants, but clients don't actually worry about that. Uh, they're happy to never see you if all their stuff works. So everybody divides the pie differently, but you basically, if you look at where you get your money, so you've got hourly labor and you might have some flat fee labor, that's project labor, for example. You'll have your managed services, which is the recurring revenue piece, and then you have some hardware and software, which in the 21st century might be sold as a service or it might be sold as a one-time purchase. Uh, but you've got all these different ways that you divide up your money. I had a coaching client one time that focused in, you know, primarily on dentists. And so dentists, when they buy big equipment with lots of x-rays and all that kind of stuff, they pay you know, $100,000, for example, for a piece of equipment. Well, they're sold it with all of the tech support included for the life of that equipment. So they don't like the idea of paying separately for service if they don't have to. And they don't understand that computers are not sold that way. So what happens is he would sell just a little bit of managed services because that's what he could get away with. And then he had a lot of hourly labor uh, because that's just the nature of dealing with dentists. <clears throat> for most of my clients, it was the opposite. 
I want almost everything covered under managed services. I want a flat fee as much as possible. And then there's a little hourly because any, <clears throat> excuse me, anything that's an add move change needs to uh, maintain billability, right? So that's how you maintain success and avoid all you can eat is ads, moves, and changes are not included. So however you divide the pie, you might have the same number of dollars at the end of the month, but you want as much of it as possible to be prepaid and included in managed services. So uh, in the old school, you break, fix, basically, um, you don't make money unless your clients are losing money, right? I used to have a client here locally that uh, I used to say, well, uh, I mean, a, a competitor locally, and I would used to say that, you know, they had this closet full of pillows, and every Monday morning they take out the pillows and they kneel down and they pray that their clients' computers will break so they can feed their families, right? Basically, they can't make money unless their clients are in pain, and that's not the way that you should be operating. With managed services, you're both facing in the same direction. You get your money on the first day of the month, and then uh, as you go along, if everything works fine, you make the most money. If anything breaks, well, now you have to go fix it, and so you use some of that profit to go fix things. So basically, you make the most money when all of your client's systems are working. They make the most money when all of their systems are working. So how do we get that done? Um, when you get all the money up front, one of the things that happens is that you really reverse uh, one of the problems with cash flow, right? When a lot of people go into business, what happens is that they bill their clients in arrears, which means that you do the work and then you send an invoice. And for whatever reason, uh, we tend to give like 20 days or 30 days and so clients might pay in 20 days. They might pay in 30 days. A lot of them, you'll learn, have gone to school to figure out that if they pay on day 59, then they're not 30 days overdue. And so they'll pay whenever they get around to it. In the meantime, especially if you've got employees, you do, you've done the work, you've sent the invoice, and you've paid your employees two or three times before you get your money. With managed services, you want to move it so that everybody prepays on the first day of the month in advance with a credit card. And that way, there's no collections, there's no accounts receivable. Basically, everybody pays up front, and then you focus on making sure everything works. So uh, when you start out with recurring revenue, let's say you sign a, let's just make it easy and say you're signing contracts at $1,000 a piece. The first one is beautiful, right? $1,000 goes a long ways. But imagine when you have two and three and five, and suddenly you get to the point where you've covered your rent, your electricity, your internet connectivity, and eventually your payroll. And you know, at some point, the recurring revenue grows to the point where you have covered all of your expenses for the month on day one. Hey, Carl, are you still with us? All right, it looks like we lost Carl here for a second. Try, are you available? I am available. Hey, Try, how about we move forward to, to your part of the presentation here and uh, we will get Carl back and we'll finish up with him when he's back on. Sound good, Carl, or sound good, Try? Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna advance these, the slides for you. We'll switch over to you and uh, you can go ahead and talk about Zeitzel and when we get Carl back online, we will finish up with him, okay? All right, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, well, sorry about uh, Carl. Hopefully we can get Carl back online, um, but thank you for the opportunity. My name is Tri Wynn, and I've been at Zysel for over uh, 15 years now uh, with experience in the network industry for over 20 years. Uh, I wanted to quickly introduce you to, um, to who Zysel is and also how our one network solution is tailor made for managed service providers. Um, so the easiest way to remember the company name is to say I sell Zysel. So that's really how you say that. And just like my name is Try, uh, try to remember, and you won't forget that either. So I'm um, just a little bit fun. Uh, we are based, our company is based out of um, Anaheim, California, and we just celebrated 30 years as a company um, this past month that we just had. And we were established in 1989, and we currently have over 1,500 associates worldwide, and we're serving 
over 150 global markets. We've powered up over 700,000 businesses uh, with a lot of our uh, business networking solutions and over 100 million connected devices globally. We also provide a comprehensive portfolio of networking product, uh, products that really kind of make it a one-stop shop. I know a lot of uh, service providers and a lot of um, uh, integrators are looking for, hey, who as a vendor has the ability to manage or provide us a solution you know, across the board? And so we have that to, to work with managed service providers, system integrators to, to give you a, a holistic networking solution. Uh, basically, I usually say anything you connect, can connect to a network uh, Zysel has a product, whether it be a security UTM appliance, wireless access point, Ethernet switching, hospitality gateways, managed in the cloud, or even virtualized, we have uh, a solution for that. So the solution that we really want to touch upon that really ties into what Carl uh, is talking about uh, and will be talking about some more is uh, what we call Zysel Nebula. It's a cloud networking uh, management platform that's really made, uh, tailor-made uh, for managed service providers. And what it is, is it, it's designed to simplify the deployment of uh, the management of networks in a scalable and cost-effective cloud management platform. You know, Carl talked about how you divide up your time. If you're spending a lot of time just going out, spending hours upon hours of doing, you know, things that you could be doing other, uh, other things, uh, this really will help to, to solve that problem because it makes it really simple. It consists of what we call the Nebula Control Center or NCC. Uh, we offer both a free cloud platform solution as well as an MSP uh, professional license platform, uh, which really adds some additional features and enhancements um, that includes like cloning web pages or cloning sites um, uh, to make a cookie cutter site type thing and cloning them to another. I'll have an example of that, um, but really like if you were focused on a dentist office, just like Carl had mentioned, um, it really comes into play as most dental, dental offices are very similar in nature in the network and it makes it really helpful for MSPs to kind of expand their reach very quickly. The setup is actually really easy. It only, it only takes, you know, just a couple of seconds to, to install. Um, we call it one, two, three, but really it's an enhancement of being able to log in the device, plug in it, um, configure it in the cloud and uh, assigning and configuring it in Nebula. You can do it actually in any order, which is actually the beauty of the system itself. Now setting up the product is actually really easy. You can even set up the device without even having to take it out of the box. The product has a QR code on the box or even on the, the belly of the device that you can simply scan with the mobile app. You can use the Nebula app to add the device into an organization site um, and then control that um, to be, um, you know, to manage it, or you can apply pre-configurations to it and apply to that site. Now imagine having a pre-configured um, cookie cutter site like I just mentioned. You have a dental office that consists of an access point, uh, a POE switch, and a gateway. Right, they're pretty much the same three things that you have in a dental office. Well, you create that kind of base profile, and then imagine when you get another customer in that same profile, all you have to do is scan the device, put it into the site, clone that um, that other customer's uh, or their, your template site into um, your new customer, and now you have the ability to just now quickly configure any specific settings that you need to do and get that up and running. Now, the whole process um, can be done really in minutes. Uh, once the device is installed and it's able to get internet access, the device dials home to the Nebula Control Center and it, it sees kind of who it belongs to, right? It goes, hey, who do I belong to? What am I? What is my configuration? And then the NCC takes over. It pushes the latest firmware to the product. It pushes any configurations that you already pre-configured. So really you no longer need to have kind of an advanced network technician to come and do the installation at the site, right? Usually that's what you had to send there so that's, you know, billable hours or very costly hours that you send somebody to go there. We actually have some partners who have now created self-install kits that they can just ship the product with some basic information that says, hey, plug in the gateway to your internet, plug the switch into your gateway, plug the access point into your, your switch. And now all of those things now have internet access through DHCP, goes and gets, um, you know, calls home, gets the configurations, gets the uh, firmware updates right away. So within minutes, you can be online, ready to go. And of course, because it is a cloud solution, it's in the Amazon cloud. So access to the control center is really at your fingertips, wherever you may be, wherever you have internet access. So if you wanna check your network status, uh, configure and troubleshoot um, your devices because maybe a customer calls in or even just preventative, right? This be able to go in and see the current status and uh, provide information not only to you, but also be able to provide that information to your customer as well. 
to be able to log into the portal to see their sites, to see their um, devices, to see how their network is functioning um, without having to be able to change things, things like that. So you have the ability to give access to um, different technicians and then to also your customers as well. Now, managing your clients um, is actually really easy. It gives you the power to manage multiple clients in a single place. So you have a single pane of glass uh, that you can manage multiple customers that have multiple sites. So we've designed support for multi-tenant organizations as well as multiple sites within each organization. So it helps to handle kind of the complexity that you may see on a wide scale management platform. Um, so some of the views that you will see is actually pretty straightforward. You have a multi-tier management um, level and you can assign roles for administrative, um, for tech, like technical um, access to the different sites or organizations. Um, you can give quick overview of the health status of that on a very high level. The cool thing is that let's say you have a division of uh, maybe tech, like your support team to managing certain regions or certain customers, but you want them to be kind of local to just that or just um, um, kind of uh, tied into just those customers, you can do that. You can put them into there to just the managing those specific customers. Uh, and then you have another group that manages another group. So again, it's very flexible in that regard to depending on how your business model is and how you want to manage the, um, the services there. And then of course, if you drill into each organization, you get a um, organizational view that shows all the different sites. So you can drill into that and see kind of a markup on where the different sites may exist on a map. You can organize that and see the overall health. Um, you see the health statuses and you see the health of each individual site. And of course, you can drill in even further, right? So you can go down deep into the site itself. Now within the site view, um, you have detailed views of the devices, the status, real-time application traffic summary. Um, you can see what kind of applications are being used the most, how much bandwidth is being used, who is using that bandwidth as well. So it's really a powerful tool that allows for you to provide really like a monthly schedule report you can provide to your customers to show really value again of your managed services, right? Some people were saying, hey, Carl was saying, how, how do I show value within uh, providing this kind of managed and maintenance service? Uh, this is one of the ways is to be able to give visibility on what's happening on the network and how you are managing the network to maintain kind of the, the uptime of the, the solution and also give visibility of who's using, going to what, what pages potentially, uh, what applications are being used most. Is it YouTube? Is it Netflix? Whatever it may be, we have that visibility within that. And then you can see the status of the devices themselves. And this is where you would also do configurations of the sites um, and all their access points, gateway switches. So from a break fix or even from a troubleshooting standpoint, you would drill into here and be able to get everything you need, logs, information, and configuration. So again, you can do all that within the Nebula platform. So the Nebula platform itself just comes in um, the different flavors of products, like I mentioned, um, gateways, uh, access points, and switches. Um, the Nebula security gateway platform consists of uh, different flavors of performance levels. The NSG is what we call it, um, is our ne Nebula security gateway platform, and it provides SPI firewall, UTM services, VPN connectivity. So any, everything you typically need in a, a network security appliance. And that's probably our number one uh, managed service uh, kind of product out there is being able to provide um, a security um, a services for the network. And of course, it's scaled based on performance, based on the different needs of um, the small business. And of course, we have a higher end model as well in our NSG 300. Now, we also have access points. Our wireless access points can be used both in standalone mode, which is what we call no Nebula, um, Nebula Flex mode, which is a free Nebula platform. And then it also can be upgradable to the full featured Nebula Pro uh, for MSPs that offer that full range of performance, form factors, um, all those kind of functions for wireless connectivity. So if you're building a hotspot gateway, you need um, guest network access, multiple SSIDs that are VLAN out, um, they can all be managed in these access points and even into the cloud. And then we have our switching network. This is a backbone of all networks and it's very important to find out, to build out your network platform and make sure that reliability, that's part of the whole idea of not having to worry about break fixing it, um, is making sure that the network is functioning um, you know, properly, even down to the core level. So Zyso offers a full range of layer two switches with and without POE management. And all, again, standalone mode, Nebula Flex with free cloud or full featured Nebula Pro. And these switches come in gigabit, 10 gigabit options with and without fiber um, and gives you all the layer two you know, functionalities that you're used to with VLANing, 
um, you need to do a QoS, those kinds of things for a very robust backbone network. So that was really just a kind of a high level of um, what you know, Zycel is and um, what products we have in the managed service space. And of course, in the initial slice you saw, Zycel does pretty much anything. If you'd like to know more about Zycel's channel program, I'd, I'd um, encourage you to reach out to a Zycel sales rep or a DNH rep for more information and see how you can join and gain access to some, to some of the you know, incredible distribution discounts, incentives, and things like that to boost your margin uh, on your opportunities. Um, and with that, I will give it back to Chris over at DNH and see if uh, Carl has come back. If he's around, uh, no, uh, it looks like we're still waiting on Carl. But I will oh, like man. say, if any of you guys have questions about uh, any of the Zeitzel, uh, the Zeitzel Nebula plot product, we'll start uh, doing some Q and A on that right now. That is again in the bottom. Actually, excuse me, I think it's on the right hand side of your guys' screen. Um, we'll be taking Q and As for a little bit. Um, hopefully, we'll get uh, uh, Carl back in here in a little bit. Maybe I'll. Beetlejuice it and we'll say his name three times and he'll he'll reappear. <laughs> I, I clearly need uh, practicing Palachek, so. Uh, yeah. But uh, I I did see one question that, that did come up about the Nebula product. Does it require the need for any all three of the products for it to work in the cloud gateway, or can they use? I think the the specific question was if they had their own switches, could they use the uh, Zeitzel gateway and the access points and still use their own PoE switches? Absolutely, and that's the flexibility of the Nebula platform is that you don't necessarily need to have all of the pieces you know, to use ISIL. Of course, I'm partial to say, hey, yes, you need to have all the three pieces, but we know that networks are, are not like that, right? So you may have a gateway that's already there, uh, but you can still use ISIL switches on their own. You can use their access points on their own. You can use their gateways on their own as well. So it depends on your business uh, scenario, your solution that you need to provide. A lot of times, uh, most people use the Nebula access points as kind of their primary starting point because uh, those are the ones that have the most numbers, right? In terms of quantity in right. a location, when you're doing the, the kind of the larger deployments, they tend to have you know, 15, 20 access points in those deployments. So you wanna have a cloud solution that gives you that, that flexibility and not have to go into every one of those devices and make configuration changes, you know, changes to security, changes to SSIDs, those kinds of things you can do it all within the Nebula Cloud. I mean, one cool feature that actually comes out of that is you have the ability to offer now a service, right? Part of either part of the managed service or a, you know, a, an add-on function service to your managed service um, a solution in that you can say, hey, you if you're at a hotel, if you're providing service to a hotel, um, you can say, well, when you have conferences on a weekend, we can actually come in and we can create a scheduled SSID that comes in for that purpose, right? So we can, go in and then mm -hmm. often fire up all the access points to all have that SSID for that conference specifically. And then after it's done, it could be scheduled to be taken out. So it's really flexible to do those kinds of things. And again, adding value to that because you now have access to it in the cloud. But of course, all products can be used on their own, but using them all together, it gives you a better holistic view of what's happening to the network, right? If, if you're trying to troubleshoot something, let's say you only have the access point piece, you only have visibility in the cloud up to that point or within that log information that you have. You know, the problem may exist where it's in the switch itself or it's in the gateway. But if you don't have that kind of all together, you have to kind of log into each one and try to put the puzzle together. Now with Nebula, you have access to the, all of that information together and be able to trace, uh, be able to see how the ports are connected to each other and then be able to troubleshoot down the line pretty easily out to you know the internet to figure out what is wrong. And then, of course, take action as well. Within the Nebula, if you're using a Nebula switch, um, you can then choose, hey, if there's something kind of weird with an access point, you can choose to reboot that, um, that's the access point you know, via a click in the, web, in the web GUI. Turn off the PoE power, turn it back on, and then hopefully the AP comes back online again, and then you know, so on and so forth. You can even schedule the PoE to reboot on a kind of a regular basis or semi-regular basis just to kind of clear things out. Um, we have customers who, <clears throat> excuse me, would do that like at nighttime, maybe like once a week or so, just to kind of help flush anything that may be happening, right? So that's that's something that can be done in the cloud. Thank you for that question. Uh, awesome. Uh, there was a, a, a someone who brought up that Carl had talked about RMM tools. Does Nebula uh, control any of the non zyxel equipment? So can you get like a, a, a competitor's access points or whatever to show up in any way, shape, or form in the uh, Zyxel Nebula interface? And if they can, what kind of abilities do you have to control it? Yeah, so the Zyxel, if you're using Zyxel switches, 
Um, one of the things that the switches do have is um, kind of a link layer detection. It can then detect to see what kind of other products, if there are other products that can talk to us per se. Um, if they have a link layer detection protocol, we can detect that. We can show that, hey, there is this kind of device here um, within our port. Now, being actually to manage it itself into control, we kind of don't have that direct control with it. Um, we can get some information based on logging and things like that, for, or, or uh, even with um, um, just, yeah, through management, uh, through management protocols. We can kind of get some information, but it's not going to be directly manageable. You're not going to get it within a GUI where we can actually control it. So that's still, again, kind of the main advantage of having everything in that one system is now you have visibility, you have full control over the entire network. And then again, it gives it gives you that um, the power of being able to cookie cutter sites, right? Be able to 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 clone a site from one to another, and that saves you a, a ton of time. You can have your your best technician, your best um, you know programmer configuration, and put it into this cookie cutter piece that you know you've tested um, and, and you've confirmed, and then of course move that on to a customer when you need to. Carl, I think I hear you. Is that you beeping in there? Uh, not not yet. Uh, the, I see the next a picture. Question, oh, oh, there's Carl. He's back, He's everyone. Hey. Well, we'll we'll, co we'll continue with the Q and A because I think Carl's still trying to get himself uh, ready to go again. Um, I do have one more question here. Uh, it was uh, we use the ATP two hundred devices. Would the NSG two hundred be on the same level? The ATP will be kind of like a, um, it's kind of the next generation. Now, just to let you know, the ATP platform will be moving into the Nebula platform. ATP is the latest hardware platform that we have. Um, the NSG 200 is still more like our USG series, uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, so it's not really on the same page per se in terms of performance. Now, based on the type of customer or your usual customer base that you would deploy, uh, the the NSG 200 would be in that space per se, but the performance of the NSG is is definitely much lower than the ATP until we bring the ATP to the Nebula. So, sorry, we just we're we're hitting a phone ringing on on our our end here on the on the actual live line. So, um, don't know if it's still there or not. Hi, this is Carl. Oh. Hey, we got Carl back. How are you doing, Carl? <laughs> well, obviously, uh, I owe you another webinar. Um, oh, I, I, I can, yes, I can do that. So, so Carl, if you can hear me, what uh, I can do is I, I can go ahead and control your slides for you, or you can do that. It's up to you. Oh, we're just trying to get things straightened out here real quick. I, I did have Carl. Carl, are you still with me? Try. How about we answer one more question while they figure this out? <laughs> sure. All, all day long. <laughs> all day long. Um, does there does I still have any uh, trade up program for the the Nebula product, or if you have, you have existing product, can you trade up? Is it is it limited to just Sitesel product? Uh, I guess that's the general question there. Yeah, um, we do have trade up programs. We do have competitive trade up programs. Uh, whether you uh, basically if you have any products that are there and that are within the same class, um, you can uh, work with our sales rep, work with um, the distribution side as well to be able to uh, get the discounts, you get a maximum discount uh, for any of those trade-ins. So um, yeah, definitely work with that and it will, will be able to help you. It does not require to be just a sell product. So any competitive device out there, so, as long as you can reference that, um, <laughs> it's tradable. Awesome. Uh, Matt Allen's, Allison's joining me right now. I don't know if Matt's mic's up yet. I don't know if it is either. I hear oh, you wait, though. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, we got Matt here. Uh, Matt's, Matt's here to also help fill in uh, for, for Carl while we're trying to get him on online as well. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to answer one more question here, uh, one more Zeitzel question. Um, general question, I've seen a couple of them, how the, the Nebula product compares to other uh, uh, platforms like the Ubiquiti or Cisco Meraki uh, platform. And I, I actually have a general question here. What does the licensing look like for Nebula? 
the licensing, uh, the way that it works too, I mean, again, it's very similar, probably more to the Meraki side of things versus the Ubiquity um, in that it is very full featured. Um, now, it's not as quite, I would say, you know, 100% like Meraki in terms of its, you know, full featuredness, but from it's very competitive in that for small business kind of applications, uh, we continue to enhance as our partners are providing us feedback. Um, more and more features are being enhanced all the time. So every couple of months, we actually have new feature functions that are going across the board to our switches, gateways, access points. Um, of course, you, uh, from a licensing standpoint, it's typically a yearly uh, licensing per node. That's the way that it's formed out. We do have multiple, multiple year licensing, but what we do offer that's kind of unique and for a managed service provider to kind of jump in uh, to is that we offer a lifetime license on it. So you get a lifetime license on the Nebula Cloud or the control center, you have a one fixed cost. Now, the cool thing is that it is a lifetime node co uh, cost. So that for that particular customer, let's say you have five access points, you get five uh, lifetime licenses on that. Now, if the technology changes and you decide, hey, we need to move to a new wireless um, uh, you know, platform or sorry, no wireless technology, uh, AC2, uh, Wave 2, Wi-Fi 6, whatever it may be, um, you can move along, put in the new Nebula hardware um, a new Nebula Flex hardware access points in there and takes that seat of that lifetime, that lifetime. So you don't have to buy another lifetime license just for that new hardware. So that means your your um, your your cost for the site is a fixed cost, and yet you can be um, getting recurring revenue on that. So you have a one-time fixed cost, which is a crazy kind of model, um, you know, to, to provide, and that's what we provide to our partners. Um, and usually the kind of the break even is anywhere between three to four years. So if you have a contract with the customer within that platform. Now, the cool thing about Nebula as well is uh, if you provide the customer with the hardware, you can always pull that hardware out and put it into another customer site and reconfigure it, reuse it, repurpose it. And it doesn't matter to the Nebula, to the Nebula Control Center. It, you just change the, you know, the organization name or the site name and then you're fine. So uh, really it will travel and it will transfer with you uh, wherever you go. So it's kind of that that you know it's like a perfect model for msps because you don't have that potential yearly contract now licenses for the security portion of it is a kind of ongoing recurrent because those require a constant maintenance of the of the security licenses that we pay to any kind of third-party vendors and things like that to provide us the signatures you know those kinds of uh things that we get updated um, daily Right, so that continues on. And so that's kind of a separate license when you buy like our NSG or our security products that way. Troy, I'm glad you're here because you are saving our butts here. Not <laughs> only are you giving great answers, you're giving us great a uh, little bit of time to, to work through some kinks. Carl, I believe we do have you again, correct? Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. That. That's all right. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, Carl, uh, I think I can go ahead and get your, your slides back up and you can continue with your, your, your presentation. Uh, okay. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead off, and so. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. So let's, let's go ahead and continue with the presentation. And then uh, once, once you're finished, we will kind of continue the Q&A. All righty. So I'm not seeing uh, a live view either. So that's all right. Um, maybe... um, just go ahead and just start talking, and I will find where you are. <laughs> okay. So I, I see. Here's what we need. So it would be before yep. that, I think. You were the one You're before that. Tell that's me fine. where you lost me. You know. I uh, believe we were okay, talking about so... the RMM tools when when yeah, we, okay. when we lost you. Perfect. All right. So the RMM. Is the, is the most important thing that you need. And the, the probably the best evidence that this is your most important tool is I have heard people say, oh, I don't want to deploy an RMM because if I do that, all kinds of problems are going to go away and my clients are going to stop calling, right? Which is proof mm -hmm. that in fact, just using this tool makes problems go away. So once you get an RMM, then what happens is that you have reduced the amount of labor it takes to provide the same service, right? That's the perfect example of why you need an RMM. So once you've got that in place, a PSA or a ticketing system, PSA is very, very full featured, but at a minimum you need a ticketing system so that you can track everything. Absolutely all the work that you do 
and your company should be in a ticket so that you can either put it towards a managed service flat fee contract or charge by the hour. And that way, um, you know, you, you keep track of everything. Um, if you let time slip through the cracks, you will lose money, period. So the PSA allows you to track all of your time. And then finally, you need a financial tool. Uh, and QuickBooks is always the answer, the, the example I use, because so many people use it. Uh, but whatever you're using is fine. There are alternatives. Uh, but obviously, you need to move things from the, the PSA into QuickBooks so that you get you know, the, the invoicing out for everything you do. Also, all of these things allow you to create automation. And automation is where you sort of double your money every time you use an automated tool. So, um, okay, next slide. So uh, in addition to all that, you need some kind of a business plan. And I'm, a lot of people say, well, you know, I've been in business for 10 years or five years or whatever. I don't have a business plan so far. It doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to be complicated, but you should have some sense of where you're going and how you're going to get there. And it could literally be one page, but you should have some sense of this is the industry I'm in and this is how I make money. And it used to be, you know, I said at the beginning, you might consider yourself a computer consultant. Well, today you should be making money selling uh, network gaming services. You should be making your money selling lighting, selling other kinds of things that are not part of the traditional break-fix computer services of the past. So what is your business model? Are you supporting all the technology at the client's office? And if so, how are you doing that on a recurring basis? Um, next, you need processes and procedures. So there is nothing that will make you more money than doing the exact same thing successfully again and again and again. Once you have a core process that you can nail down and you can say, look, this is how we provide monthly maintenance. This is how we do uh, checkups. This is how we make sure that the client systems are all working. This is how we test backups. All of those things, once they're documented, can be handed off to lower and lower uh, <laughs> level technicians uh, who can provide a higher level of service because they're simply going through a checklist, right? So think of it as sort of like being a franchise. You don't have to be a franchise, but if you behave like a franchise, then you have the ability to have your entire business run by people who uh, are not MCSEs and don't have the highest level of engineering, um, but they can still do a great job for you. Uh, next, you need service agreements. So contracts. Um, a lot of people say, oh, my customers trust me or I trust them or whatever. Um, that's not what contracts are about. Contracts or service agreements um, aren't about the service you provide. They're about the relationship. And when everything is going great, nobody wants to look at them. <laughs> it's when things go, go sideways that you need a contract. Like what happens if they don't pay the bill? You know, who owns the equipment? Who pays the taxes, right? All of that kind of stuff. So service agreements are just the basic, you know, standard that you use for getting into business. And again, a lot of people are worried that clients are going to say, well, I don't need that or you don't need that or, you know, I trust you or whatever. Um, but the bottom line is it's a very standard thing, and they sign a contract for their Internet connectivity, for getting their windows washed and for everything else, and they should sign a contract with you. Um, and finally, you need great products and great services and great partners. So, um, you know, I see a lot of people who say, well, I'm, you know, I try to save my clients money, and you'll see them post something on Reddit or Facebook. So they go, does anybody know a place where I can get really, you know, entry-level crappy rebuilt desktops? And I'm like, no, I have no idea where you buy that because I would never sell that to my clients, right? You need to sell good stuff. I mean, if you only have people who refuse to buy decent equipment, you really need to get different clients. Uh, we're entering an era now with all the ransomware and so forth that there's going to be a big partner that hasn't been part of our industry ever before, and that's the insurance companies. When people lose everything to ransomware, they're going to be out of business for a few days, and even if you get them back in business, uh, they're going to file a claim with their insurance company for the amount of downtime they have, right? And that's business continuity insurance is going to look to somebody to pay them back. And that's going to be the IT service provider. And whether you like it or not, you are going to be one of the people named in such a lawsuit. 
And so you need to be prepared to provide good quality services. And if people won't pay for it, it really, honestly, I know it's really hard to do, but you got to walk away <clears throat> from people who want to, you know, create a half-baked system because at the end of the day, even if they don't hold you responsible, their insurance company will. So good partners, good products, good services are absolutely critical. Okay, next slide. So um, basically, you know, the outlines of where you need to go. You got to start making a plan. You need to get a uh, three-tiered price list. And, you know, you've seen this time and time again. Um, I like to tell people you got to weed your client garden. And part of that is, you know, divide your clients into A, B, and C clients. And whether you like it or not, you got to get rid of clients who can't possibly pay the way. You know, if somebody gives you $300 a year, um, you really can't build a business on that. You might survive for today, but the long-term plan is you've got to get rid of clients who, who can't pay you enough money for you to build a successful ongoing business. Um, you know, finish putting together the plan, focus on A-level and, and uh, some B-level clients, uh, write your service agreements, print up that, you know, plan, um, meet with your clients and move them over to managed services. Uh, move them over to the recurring revenue. And the first time you do it, uh, I'm not joking. You just send me an email because I want to hear about it because I love hearing stories of people who signed their first named service deal. Uh, when you get that recurring revenue, and it's usually it is in the range of you know seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month, um, it feel, feels amazing. And then someday down the road, you're going to find one that's thirty five hundred dollars a month, and then you'll find one that's ten thousand dollars a month. It really can happen, and there's so many services now that are just designed to be sold on a monthly recurring basis, and that's what you need to focus on. And if you look at you know, where you spend your money, there's a lot of things like Netflix and other things where you pay on a monthly basis. Their clients are used to that, and it's what they want to do. Next slide. And again, Carl, do you find the 80-20 the rule, like in this scenario as well with managed services, where, um, you know, 80% of your revenue comes from 20% or even from the support level, where there's the 20% of people that you're providing 80% of the support to? Well, if you're in break six, it's definitely the case that there's a 20% that take 80% of your labor, but they definitely don't give you 80% of the money. Right? They give you 20% of the money. Right. Um, and that's just, that's a natural thing. Uh, in terms of managed services, I really encourage people to not let one client grow too big. Um, and so there's a, it's a much, I think a more even distribution of, of money versus services uh, once you're on managed services, because, whether you go with flat, I mean, with a per user or per device, you still have a money per something equation that kind of flattens out those curves. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So when people say, oh, managed services is a fad, or I've heard people say, oh, you should move to cloud services, you know, the, the era of managed services is over. I think that's just silly. Managed services is simply the way that IT support will be delivered from now on. Like for the rest of your life, this is how it's going to be. Um, and so, um, but it does mean that you have to be focused on providing preventive maintenance and actually delivering on that. And so with that, I think that, you know, if you start building these recurring revenue models and, and focus on that, that's where you're going to get the security to actually take some chances. I had somebody email me recently and said, you know, ever since I've got about $8,000 a month of recurring revenue, I can take chances and I can try new things in my business, which I was afraid to do when I was just doing break fix. Okay, last slide. So I would absolutely focus on creating bundles, and it can be bundles of Hardware, it can be, bu be bundles of software, bundles of services, put it all together. If you say, look, here's what I provide. We do the network management, plus antivirus, spam filtering, email, storage, antivirus, right? We put all of that together in a bundle, and it's X number of dollars. And that is really hard to sell against. It's actually easy to sell to clients because there's a certain amount of 
fatigue in looking at all of those services and saying, are you telling me I have to sign up for 12 subscriptions? And you say, no, you sign up for one subscription. We put it all into the bundle and then we deliver it. And we have designed this bundle with the right services and the right quality partners so that, you know, we are going to make all of this work the way it's supposed to. And that's surprisingly easy to sell and it's hard to sell against. And if a client says, well, you know, how, what can we reduce? You're like, uh, you know, there's not much you can reduce because we're talking about the most fundamental elements of running your business. Storage, email, antivirus, fan filtering, right? Those things are absolutely essential. So the bundle is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and it allows them to have one invoice for flat fee services every month and then one invoice for whatever little things were at move change. Uh, and so instead of getting a dozen invoices, they get one and sometimes two. Uh, and finally, you know, as I mentioned before, don't do all you can eat, right? Go to a go to a restaurant that has an all you can eat buffet, and it, I guarantee there'll be rules because there's no such thing as all you can eat. So, uh, and with that, I am open for any questions. All right, Carl. Uh, thank you so much for your scrambling and get back on with us. Yep, we're gonna be staying here, <laughs> taking a couple more questions for Carl. Uh, one thing I did want to note, though. Uh, Carl, if you had Zyxel internet products, you wouldn't have had this problem to begin with. So uh, <laughs> it, it's it's time to upgrade. It's, it's time to upgrade. And I can tell you, I've heard some great things about Nebula. So uh, you might want to talk to Try about uh, that a little bit after we get off the call. Uh, and I, I do want to I do want to recognize here, uh, Matt. Thank you for for coming for coming here. Unfortunately, Hi, unfortunately. Try and Carl, you'll be able to hear Matt, but Matt won't be able to hear you. So haven't heard a word. So <laughs> we'll, 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 I'll kind of be an intermediate if we have to. Uh, one question I did see come up, and this one is for for Carl. Uh, someone wanted to know if any of the books you have, Carl, have any templates uh, uh, to do business plans, agreements, or, or any of the, the things like that. Um, actually, thank you for the uh, slow pitch. All of my books uh, are filled with All templates. So many services in a month has templates on pricing models and uh, service delivery and you know lots of checklists. Service. I have a one called Service Agreements for SMB Consultants, which is it's about how to create a, a, a basic IT consulting contract followed by uh, using that for the basis of a managed service contract, and then it's also got all kinds of additional stuff for things like if you have programmers or you know you want to you want to sign a um, a writer for um, service level agreements that kind of stuff so those are out there they're all on amazon so thank you for that awesome uh another question what is some of the best ways uh, to begin marketing your uh, marketing yourself as a new msp well so the main thing that you need to do is put together your bundle. Like once you have a bundle, then – and I would actually avoid the words MSP or managed service provider. Uh, too often, if you go out there saying, I do managed services, then you're in a market where you have somebody else to find what you do. And you will have prospects who will say, oh, I know what you're going to do. You're going to put a three-tiered price list in front of me, and you're going to make me pick one of them. And all I know about it is – your competition is eight cents cheaper, right? So don't do that. Instead, I would say get your bundle and then go to people and say, we've got a service offering that includes literally all the technology you need in one bundle. And that starts the conversation. And personally, I love doing live events, speaking at the Rotary Club and the Kiwanis and BNI and all of those groups. Um, they have 15, 20 minute slots, and no matter where you live, there's probably one meeting you could attend every business day for for the entire month, because these groups have to have speakers all the time. And so you could go in there and say, well, let's talk about antivirus, or let's talk about ransomware, or let's talk about security, um, or new technology. Those are all great topics that uh, really engage the clients, and then you know, if they have any questions, they come to you because you're the expert in the front of the room. Yeah, and that's where I think awesome. the Nebula platform and even what Zizel provides even beyond Nebula 
um, really helps and facilitates that because there are many different options, many different applications that you can use as part of that solution and be, be able to provide the bundles that, that Carl's been talking about, uh, being able to package yeah. in um, all of those networking solutions all under one. And the cool thing is that Nebula can be happening in the background. You don't necessarily even have to say or even have to say, well, we are using Xyacel products. We just are offering a solution. It's part of this bundle package and all of the things kind of happening in the background you know, with our, our solution. So I'm going to I'm going to bring Matt into this conversation. Cool. Sorry, go ahead, Carol. Uh, I was just going to say it also allows you to like get away from the discussion of margin. You don't have to say, well, this it's X plus you know ten percent, twenty percent, whatever. The bundle can can have a much higher value, and so uh, when you bundle things and you buy them wholesale, you have the ability to sell at a much higher price for the bundle as a whole. Awesome. Real quick, I want to bring bring Matt into this. So uh, bring you into this conversation because you've heard none of it. We've been talking about bundles for a little bit here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> on the on the, D, the DNH side, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the bundles we're doing on uh, the uh, is it XXAS uh, side. Yeah, X as a service. X as a service. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll just talk about it briefly. I mean, uh, I, so for those of you watching, uh, my name is Matt Allison. I'm the cloud technical specialist. Uh, I do a number of videos here in the Solutions Lab. Uh, as He's well as, doing one next month, yes. December 19th. We'll talk about it later. So we have one coming up. Um, and the one that actually is coming up is sort of applicable here. Um, we at DNH uh, are really trying to build out not just a cloud solution, but we want to uh, really provide you with all of the tools from A to Z that you might need if you are brand new or you are an established MSP. Those include uh, bundles, as, as you guys have been discussing, and specifically X as a service. So. X in this regard, it just is a variable, meaning anything as a service. The idea is that we have a, a cloud portal which allows you to uh, manage and facilitate uh, recurring services for your customer, whether they be cloud services that you purchase through DNH or custom made bundles uh, that includes hardware, uh, either your own or purchased from DNH, uh, services, either your own or purchased from DNH, including things as uh, you know, minutia as simple as your own billable hours, things like that, can be all wrapped up into these bundle SKUs that are available um, for you to create and then uh, market directly to your customer. Awesome. Uh, we're going to use that as the red band trailer for your upcoming webcast, December 19th, 2 p.m. Uh, Matt's going to be back in here doing his uh, quarterly cloud update. Yeah, to uh, be clear, though, it's, it's, yep. it's going to, and I, for those of you out here, uh, out there who um, are interested in infrastructure as a service, in other words, using Microsoft Azure specifically, and lift and shifting, moving in existing environments up to the cloud, that's the webcast for you. We brought on a number of really, really important third-party uh, tools to help uh, guide you along with that, so we can't wait for you to get uh, a chance to look at that. Um, you know, so next week, I'll, I'll go into that a lot more. And I hate to do this. I know this is yep. live, but I'm going to gracefully exit. Yeah, I, was I actually say, I was have say, another meeting to go to. And I, didn't I was going to say, I was going to give you an out here now that, <laughs> now that we brought you in here to, to help fill some time. Uh, but thank you for stopping by when we had some technical issues to fill a hole. We we'll let you get out of this awkward situation. Hey, thanks. It's not awkward. <laughs> it's, not, it's my people. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump back into the Q&A here. Uh, uh, Carl, there was um, a couple of people. Uh, asking if there was any particular RMM uh, products you'd recommend. Um, obviously, uh, Zyxel got a, a great one on the network side. Um, any uh, any remote management uh, uh, tools or anywhere someone can get started just researching that stuff. I mean, obviously, DNH well, is a great resource as well. But uh, but anywhere if anyone wants to, to get started out there. Yeah, I mean, the the good news is there's dozens of them, and for the most part, they're all pretty darn good. The, the, the main thing that you need is you've got to look at your clientele and say, what do we use? For most people on the call, my guess is that's a Windows-based network. Some people have a lot of Macs, in which case they need to look at, you know, they need to sort of trim it down by that. But I have used in my business um, several PSAs and several RMMs and uh, you know, I don't want to be like too political, but I would say that the RMMs that I think are the easiest to deploy um, in this order are the SolarWinds RMM, uh, followed by Continuum. 
followed by Kaseya. And I know that there's a dozen others I could mention, but that's just my experience. Um, But everybody's also got a different pricing model in mind and so forth. If you already have a PSA, I would seriously consider using their associated RMM, um, you know, because it's so much easier to use one stack, right? And and they're sort of their job to make all that stuff work together. Um, so, uh, you know, and a lot of people won't be happy with any of that, but <laughs> that's my well, opinion. That, that'll lead me to a kind of another question. This one's uh, go back to you, directed at you, Try uh, does, does the Nebula uh, platform have uh, open APIs that, that you can use to integrate into any other RMM or PSA platforms? Well, currently what we do have is we do have some SNMP hooks that allow for you to do that. Now, direct um, APIs that go into the platform, it's in discussion. Um, as we have more and more partners who have requests for certain RMM tools that need the integration, we could provide for that. So um, definitely reach out to us. Let us know, um, you know, what are the popular platforms that you guys are, are, are feeding back to us? You know, what are you are using? Um, and we can work with that. But uh, and if you are not tied into a particular RMM tool, um, this is all Nebula offers all of that with the ticketing, with all of the reporting, the logs, the access, all of that kind of um, information it can be provided with that. So you have all that kind of within the same uh, location to get alerts, alarms, when network things go down in kind of break-fix scenarios, um, things like that. So, Awesome. Uh, next one's for Carl. Uh, and I'm going to uh, sum this one up because I think I, I lost it a couple seconds ago. Uh, a lot of uh, the, the questions asking, a lot of my customers are very small. Uh, one to five employees at largest 25. Uh, these customers tend to be a little bit more apprehensive of moving uh, to a managed service model. Uh, is there any uh, particular approach that you found uh, effective with these very small businesses uh, that really are only looking for the old model where they're, they're really only there when they need to get new hardware support? They're not really looking for a, a kind of a monthly uh, uh, services uh, platform there? Well, uh, so my latest book is called Cloud Services in a Month. And uh, in, in Managed Services in a Month, I touch on a thing that I call the cloud five pack. But in Cloud Services in a Month, I go into super deep detail about it. Basically, the cloud five pack is that you sell, you put together your bundle of services and you sell it in a pack of five licenses. So it could be five licenses for RMM, five licenses for Office, five licenses for their storage, again, antivirus, stamp up and all that. Um, you put that into a bundle and that's super easy to sell. And even though technicians tend to say, well, if they only have three users, they don't want to buy five licenses. The reality is, Clients never ask that question. Only technicians ask that question. Um, <laughs> clients, clients love to say, wait a minute, so if I hire somebody, my cost goes up to zero? You say yes, right? So it's, it's great. It's, in fact, it, is, it was originally designed for that 1 to 15 or 20 uh, market. Um, and, you know, in, in the old days, and I always use this example, in the old days, if somebody's got uh, 23 users. You would sell them one 20 pack of semantic antivirus and one five pack of semantic antivirus, and nobody ever complained, and nobody even mentioned it because it was so obvious that that was just the cheapest, best way to make sure everybody's covered and you got a little flexibility. It's exactly the same thing when you bundle a bunch of cloud services. You're going to sell them five five packs, and the only Real difference is instead of the unused licenses going to Symantec, you get to keep the money for those unused licenses. It's easy to sell, and again, it's it's sort of that concept that what you're going to do is try to provide all the services you need in one bundle, right? And you get five licenses. It's a model that they understand from Office 365. It's an office model that they understand from Netflix, right? Nobody ever calls Netflix and says, hey, I'm only using my TV. I'm, ne- I'm never looking at this on a tablet. I'm never looking at my phone. I want my money back, right? So oh, right. Sometimes I want to, though. <laughs> right, but, you know, it, it, you know, 
the it's the model of the 21st century, and it sells really, really well. So uh, for those super small clients, that's what I would do. And we have sold, um, first of all, I've sold millions of dollars worth of, of cloud services with that model. Um, but a lot of it has been to one and two and three person shops where, you know, because if you think about it, five licenses of all that stuff, you put it all together, it doesn't cost you $125 a month, but you can sell it at $299 or, or more, uh, plus a managed services component um, for $299. And so you get five, six, seven hundred dollars $700 a month, uh, and the client is super, super happy because it basically includes everything they need. Awesome. Uh, Try, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, answer a question you answered privately, uh, uh, publicly, so the whole class can hear. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, there was uh, Richard asked, asked uh, can Zeitzel products deliver the same level of security over uh, wired and wireless connections compared to solutions like Sophos, uh, for example? Yeah, I think as we add the ATP solution, uh, which is our most advanced um, a security appliance platform to the Nebula system um, this coming quarter. Um, we, we will definitely have something that will compete in that. Now, of course, the ATP series uh, on its own and in a standalone um, can already do that in terms of a performance, a sandboxing, um, the highest level of security um, that you have available, especially for the small business, right? And so the thing that Zysol does is bring um, that in a, in a, into a kind of a price point area that makes sense for the small business to be able to get the, the, the right speeds, right, without having to sacrifice security. Um, so that's where the ATP platform really comes in play and uh, gives you a great value um, without having to buy, you know, a giant box just to, for a five-person um, office just because they got gigabit connectivity, right? So it really puts it back into the, the right kind of perspective for that. Awesome. Well, uh Carl, uh, uh, thank you for, for per, uh, persevering over the uh, technical difficulties you had. Uh, is there anything you want to want to close with uh, before we uh, sign off? Just you know, if people are interested, they can email me, and you know, I'll point them towards any resources I have. But I really believe BreakFix is just the wrong, wrong, wrong way to go, <laughs> and yeah. I encourage people to. Uh, to focus on models of recurring revenue that are just they're 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 right in every way you can imagine for your business. Uh, this is a, this is it's a topic that's really important to us here at DNH as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. uh, we are investing uh, a tremendous amount of time and resources into helping our customers move to uh, a recurring revenue platform. Uh, that's why uh, trainings like this happen, and they will continue to happen. And if they continue to happen, I hope we're able to to get you again. Uh, try, uh, you have been uh, just a complete rock star today. Uh, and thank <laughs> you for all the amazing information on Zyxel, uh Nebula. Anything you would like to uh, close out with? Um, just, uh, just the fact that we're just not limited to Nebula ourselves. So Zyxel does provide just a great solution. So whatever applications that you're looking at doing or thinking about going into, um, Zyxel has something, a solution to, to fulfill those needs. So. Definitely reach out to, to us here at Zycel. If you want to email me directly as well, my email is just try at Zycel.com. Um, so it's T-R-I at Zycel.com. So it's easy to remember. But thank awesome. you again. Uh, uh, for you guys that are watching, uh, this uh, webcast, for better or worse, will be available on demand in the next 24 hours. Uh, <laughs> DNH.com slash solutions lab, DNH.ca slash solutions lab. Uh, if you have any questions uh, beyond uh, uh, the resources uh, that uh, – uh, Carl and Try gave out uh, here at DNH. We've got uh, solutions lab at dnh.com. Zyxel specialist at dnh.com if you have any specific Zyxel questions uh, for DNH. When this webcast is over, there will be a quick survey that launches. Please take a moment to answer the four questions and give us your feedback. We had Matt on earlier to talk about the upcoming webcast he's got coming up next month, uh, December 19th, 2 p.m. again. Registration for that will be available soon as well. Uh, but with the, without with all that being said, uh, thank you guys for joining us so much. Thank you, Carl, for all the, the work, the perseverance, and thank you, uh, Try, for your invaluable information. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having me.